Welcome to Spark, a smartphone, smart watch for people with Parkinson's disease. Spark takes advantage of the technology that most of us now have and is quickly penetrating through both the elderly community and those who are taking care of the elderly. So we all have these smartphones and you might know that on smartphones you can do all sorts of things including track how you're moving, your workout, those types of things. So we're trying to harness that information from these motion sensors to see how people with Parkinson's move throughout the day. And it turns out that the way you move is exquisitely sensitive to the medication you take. You could be moving normally at one moment, but if the medication were to wear off, you'd start having problems like shaking, problems walking, even problems writing, those types of daily activities. Now when patients come into our office, we certainly ask them about all of these things, but we only see them for 15 or 20 minutes and they're usually spending far more time outside trying to do things. The idea with the Spark is that we would have that data to look at how they're moving at any given moment and hopefully by doing that we can optimize their medications and improve their quality of life. Sparks kind of came up in a conversation I had with a biomedical engineering friend and we just started talking about sort of the problems that we face as neurologists treating people with movement problems and then his background in biotechnology. And it just sort of emerged as a neat idea. And we said, well, this seems like something we could really try and do. And then the question is, how do we get support to do it? Um, obviously, we just need enough funds to get the devices and then also be able to provide support for the people doing the programming and so forth. We're used to trying to get money from nonprofit organizations, foundations, or the government like NIH, but times are tough sometimes and funding's not always there. And also, you oftentimes need to have a lot more preliminary information or data to support what you want to do. And this technology is so new that we didn't have that data. So Pinch provided us with the opportunity to make an, a pitch, if you will, to people telling what the concept was. Is this something that you'd see as a screening tool as well? This is really for tracking people who have already been diagnosed, and then based on how they move, we can tell when they need medications and when they don't. If the concept was good enough, they could give us enough funding to at least generate the data, make a prototype, and then see if it's really worth pursuing any further. The timeline is much faster with Pinch. It can take well over a year, if not at least a year, to see if any proposal that you put, say, to the NIH would get funded. With Pinch, it was literally a matter of several weeks. And that makes a difference in people's lives, too, because they don't have to wait as long to see if something can be available. The second thing about Pinch that's interesting, at least to me as a physician in an academic university setting, is I'm used to working with foundations and nonprofits. But Pinch had an aspect of it that was also looking at being more entrepreneurial, if you will with their uh, sources of funding and actually find people in the community and companies that might be interested in investing some of their R&D funds towards moving things forward. So I learned a lot about commercialization and how to maybe approach people about ideas and, and get funding that way for the same diseases that we're interested in to help people faster. And then the other thing is the pipeline is a lot faster. So once you have an idea, if the business community knows about it, that want to get together with people that they don't naturally necessarily work with and have an idea that really they think can help and can be done in a short amount of time, but that hasn't been tried. And so for us, pinches fit that model really well.